Меня зовут Гена, и я приветствую вас в новом выпуске нашего подкаста. Сегодня у нас особенный эпизод. Это наш первый выпуск с иностранным гостем. Запись подкаста была сделана около месяца назад, и релиз выпуска, как вы можете заметить, несколько затянулся. Связано это с тем, что мы пробовали несколько вариантов озвучки и перевода нашей беседы на английском языке, чтобы найти оптимальный формат для вас. В итоге, все же, после нескольких проб и ошибок, мы решили остановиться на оригинальной версии на английском языке с русскими субтитрами. И надеемся, что такой вариант вам будет удобен для прослушивания и просмотра. Наш гость сегодня тот из компании Nomatic, штат Юта, США. Мы знакомы с Тодом уже много лет, и он любезно согласился ответить на наши вопросы и на вопросы, которые вы оставили в нашем телеграм-канале. Благодарим вас за внимание и желаем приятного просмотра. Так, всем привет. Сегодня у нас в гостях Тот из Наматик. Привет, Тот. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Тот Свитцлер. Я вице-президент по продажам в Наматик. Perfect. Well, you know some Russian. That's it. That's all. Yeah, so uh, let's switch to English then. Uh, uh, so it was a, a nice intro. Thanks for that. Um, so today we would we are going to speak about nomadic, of course, and I have a couple of questions for you. And in general, I'd like to start with uh, brand origins. Like what does nomadic stand for and how did the brand come to life? Yeah, that's great. We, you know, we started 10 years ago and it was really, um, two cousins, John and Jacob. And I love this story because I think it kind of fits in with the spirit of the whole brand, which is they just wanted to start a business. They wanted to do something different. Neither of them were product designers. That was not their background. In fact, I think Jacob was, a, an accountant, like an auditor. And um, they want to do something different and they want to try something new. And so they really founded the company on that principle of um, kind of life on the move, which nomadic, of course, is a kind of representation of that, um, that spirit and philosophy. So that's what they did. They just were two young cousins that got together and said, let's start a business. They didn't develop their first product and think they should turn it into a business. They actually said, we want to start a business. And then they were very methodical and they had a good process and, and they were committed. So Jacob learned how to sew and they found that, you know, Kickstarter was kind of doing well and new products. And so he learned to sew a wallet and he actually got a really cool innovation in there and it just took off. And then from there, It was just Kickstarter, Kickstarter, Kickstarter. So crowdfunding's really been kind of the the genesis of the company. And it's been great because you get a lot of feedback from the customers. And then we started making travel bags and the company kind of took off from there. So that's that's the beginning was just two guys trying to improve their lives and do it in an efficient way. And um, it really kind of is the the feeling here at the office all the time is kind of that same spirit. Oh, cool. So, what, what uh, was it? Their own um, design, or have they um, hired someone to to make this product? The first one, the wallet. Yeah. So, I think they thought they were going to get very few orders, and they got a lot of orders from the first Kickstarter. So that was kind of their first obstacle. Was holy cow, Jacob's not going to be able to just sew forty thousand or whatever the number was of these wallets. We're going to have to find manufacturing but the design was completely uh theirs i think i think it was actually jacob's like sister-in-law that just taught him how to sew and then he stayed at it and um came up with the pull tab to easy access those cards it's a nice minimalist wallet and uh still one of our best sellers by the way it's awesome and he just came up with that and it was actually it was novel the way he did it enough to where he actually got the patent for the way that that those core, core uh, cards pull out but i i see many wallets uh, now with the same uh, let's say method of uh, pulling the cards out uh yeah 
<laughs> so yeah do you do you use your um, um do you like do you uh, use your, this this pattern to somehow um uh, yeah. tell the guys that <laughs> you cannot do that without our commission yeah no we do, we've we've found a lot out there um so yeah if it's a major violation i th i suppose we would go and uh ask them to stop using that um yeah but for the most part i mean it, it hasn't been a major issue for us it's there's been a few violators but that happens in business i mean it, we see it a lot we've encountered it in bigger ways with some of our other products as well um so luckily it hasn't been too disruptive um at this point so it's good the wallets it was a cool idea and um yeah we'll actually have more wallet news later this year so while it's still part of the business for sure new colors new types of wallets coming out okay uh, now we know how the first uh, and very popular product uh, was made uh, so maybe know how the new products uh, are born now and can you share some interesting insights from uh, behind the scenes of the development process yeah you bet i mean this is the fun part of the company is that we're product focused and we're customer focused. Um, but product is a discussion every day and it's really fun and people have lots of ideas and there's lots of debates internally. Um, but one of the ways we develop product is actually, um, from customer feedback. So the apparel that we recently launched, um, that was a perfect example. That was the decision was made to make apparel after we surveyed thousands of our customers. And their number one answer of what would you like us to make? Uh, you know, if we were to make something new, it was apparel. So they all said, if you make clothing items, uh, we would trust that there would be uh, good quality in the materials and thoughtful design. And so that's what we did. We went and made apparel. And so far, the feedback's been incredible on our apparel. And I love our apparel, too, which is always a nice benefit for me. <laughs> uh, and I highly recommend, you know, our our jacket, our pants, they're all, they're all just great. So, um, that's one way we do it. The other one is just personal, uh, interests. I mean, that's how the company got started. Um, when we moved into travel bags, it was just John and Jacob, uh, kind of dissatisfied with what was on the market and trying to make, you know, the perfect travel bag, which I think the first one we did was the 40 liter travel bag. And they were just, not happy with the lack of organization for a duffel bag. And so some of it's just personal interests. And um, yeah, I think the other part is just, there's got to be room for innovation. So there's some products we wouldn't make because we don't have a better idea than what is already on the market. So I can think of a handful. I won't, I won't name them, but there's things we're not going to do because we can't do better than what's out there. And so we're really focused on you know, where can we contribute um, and make some sort of like benefit and something that our customers will appreciate. Um, but yeah, this is the fun part. I, I think it's, it's great. And I think there's a lot of customer feedback. And I think as our company grows, hopefully we can react faster and make things um, that our customers are telling us they want or changes they want in a product and just do it faster. So our you know, we've moved a little bit beyond just John and Jacob. We do have uh, three designers now. And so hopefully you'll see cool, new, exciting things happening faster. Well, I'm sure about this. Uh, and also, okay, you told me that um, the first product was extremely successful, unexpectedly successful, the Nomadic Wallet. Uh, but speaking of top sellers now, which product, um, or which product holds uh, the title of uh, Nomadic's all-time bestseller and what is flying off the shelves this year? Yeah, the number one bestseller is still, maybe no surprise, the Travel Pack. I mean, this is one of our best products. Um, it's historically our number one it still is our number one to this day. So we've been iterating on that. We have new color variations. Um, we're working on some future design changes potentially. Um, and uh, yeah, number one by a long shot, I think even. It's just our most loved bag. 
It's got tons of features. It really represents Nomadic very well with the quality, the thoughtfulness of design. Um, and yeah, it will last a long time. So that's, that's it. This, this year, I would say the thing that's been a standout has been the reception on the apparel items I was discussing. Um, especially the jacket's been really surprising. It's hot here where we live and uh, it's still is selling well. Like people are buying this jacket in the, during the middle of a heat wave. So people really love that. And our apparel is just really exciting because it was scary launching apparel. And uh, you, you have to get the feedback that people like the fit is really important. And um, anyway, we've gotten that. I mean, the reviews have been outstanding. And so we'll be going full steam ahead um, with apparel. Actually, the probably we should, we should consider um, adding a, the apparel uh, to the bag and wallets range. Uh, and please let us know in the comments, uh, would you, uh, would, would you buy the apparel? Would you be excited to, to come and try um, the nomadics, uh cool stuff? Uh, so, okay. So uh, I'm not surprised that uh, the travel pack is, uh, is a best selling item. Um, but uh, what's your personal uh, favorite nomadic product? Which one do you use or carry? So advantage that I know some people that can give me some nomadic products. So I get to use all of it. But um, and I so I switch. I actually switch off. I'll I'll go on one trip. I've been using for months now the, uh, the twenty five liter camera pack. Um, and I, and I love that bag. I mean, actually that's personally, that's probably my favorite bag. I just love the look of it, which is really interesting. That's not, we focus on function and quality of materials. Something that's not discussed here a lot, which I think is interesting is how our stuff looks, but it looks awesome. So I personally, <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll pick a bag because it's got to check all those boxes, but it also, to me, it needs to be the right look. And uh, yeah, I think we have a good, it's a professional look, but it's not over the top. It's not, you know, too shiny or anything. It's just, uh, it's a, it's a good looking bag. So that's what I use. And then every day, I mean, of course, I use our access sling I mean, every day. This is, this is one that I use all of the time. So this is an essential too. When I go on, I travel a lot. So to keep my passport, wallet, phone, and I think that's mostly what I have in here right now. I have some caffeinated toothpicks. Nice. Just I'm addicted to these things. Another way to get more caffeine in there. Um, and our wallet, man, I love our wallet. So this is, you know, simple, quick access you know, get to your cards, both sides, and then put it away. So those are the things on Nomadic. I mean, and of course our apparel, I'm wearing our pants right now. I, I wear our, I wear our apparel every day believe now. You are in, in the pants. <laughs> yeah. You have to take my word for it, but it's, um, yeah, this is, those are my main things, the travel pack. And then, of course, when I travel, the luggage. But, um, you know, yeah, we have some exciting news with luggage coming up, too. So I won't try to spoil that too much. Oh, that's, um... yeah, those are my, yeah, those are my everyday nomadic, nomadic everyday Perfect. carry and items. You are not using, uh, so you're using this 25 liters Makinen as a, not as a photo bag. You use it as an everyday bag, right? Yeah, I've been rocking it as an everyday bag. Um, I mean, I'm wearing a hat right now, but I do wear hats a lot. So it's kind of like when I travel, it's a nice place to, you know, it's so structured and so padded that there's things I put in there. So I normally put a tech organizer in there, throw some hats, sometimes an extra pair of shoes. So yeah, it works really well. I mean, I still use the travel pack, but for a few months now, actually, I think it's just been the 25 liter and I love it. It looks good. I like how it rides on my uh, 
trolley handle on my suitcase as well when I'm going through the airports. So yeah, that's that's been the bag. And then yeah, these access slings. I mean, it's just where I keep everything. It's and I keep my pockets free. It makes it easier going through security. But even just day to day, it's just nice to kind of empty my pockets, keep them in this access sling. I'm used well, to having cool. it here. It's now. cool. Uh, so we know and understand you have uh, the full access to any nomadic products. Um, but what's your yeah. um, favorite everyday carry item that is not from nomadic? Nomadic. Yeah, you're speaking my language. I love everyday carry items. I'm thoughtful about it. This is exactly, in a lot of ways, I am a nomadic customer because nomadic customers um, look for, you know, thoughtful design, function. Um, they actually don't buy designer brands. Like we know this through the data. Like they won't buy something because it has a designer name. They want something um, that's good value and it's through the you know quality so anyway that's what i look for in everyday items i love uh, I've, i only have a few watches but i love this is my everyday hamilton pulsar it was designed after the first digital watch ever made so i rock this almost every day i always have a knife so i always have my this one i have a few knives that i kind of rotate between um but this is just a cricket swindle and i you know, considering my primary use is cutting open boxes. Uh, this is just a nice kind of design. I actually like the slope. It was designed by a famous designer too. Ken Onion is his name. So the swindle, I always have that on me. And I am a Utah. So I also always have the P365 TAC Ops. So this is my everyday carry. And those are those are the things that live with me all the time. That's the six hour P365 TAC Ops edition. Um, it lives on me too. That's an unexpected item of, uh, for our audience probably. So, I mean, uh, this is not, that's going to be possibly in our bag and wallet range soon. But, uh, well, uh, of course, this is, this is a, a cool item that is probably um, good to have on an everyday uh, carry basis. Yeah, yeah, that's when I hear everyday carry and I realize, especially with the industry we're in, it means more. But if I say that to most of my friends here, they think I'm asking what guns so, they carry. Uh, is it uh, like, have you ever like used or tried to use it or it's just uh, a, a thing that just, allows you actually not to use it <laughs> uh, because it's unnecessary. Yeah, it's a little it's a little unnecessary. It's pretty safe here. So I think it's um, culturally a lot of people in Utah would carry guns. Um, and yeah, to it's probably very unnecessary. So <laughs> but it is fun. Yeah, I, I, I they're like. I'm like a big kid. I like my toys and um, yeah, but I'm, I'm also very particular about everything from my my watch to what's in my pockets to what's you know what am I carrying that's one of the coolest part about you know nomadic too is I'm picky so if I'm using it I feel really good about it so I use our wallet you know I use the sling bag I use our travel bags and it's such a positive experience and I think it makes huge fans for nomadic um, in a way that it doesn't happen with every product. Like not every product, when you start using it, does it become an elevated, better experience? You know, that that's the trick is I think that's the hardest thing to communicate for Nomadic is it's hard to tell that story of the experience, right? When you actually start using it, you'll find that they put a lot of thought into the design and how people are going to be using it. So, and that's what I'm looking for, especially of importance when it's something I'm using every day. All right. So but regarding uh, the gun to carry, uh, I remember that uh, there is a, uh, well, uh, the, I think the samurais from Japan, they, they like, say if, even if uh, your, your sword uh, will be, will, help, will save your life just once, it's worse to carry it all your life. Like 
it will be unnecessary all your life, but one day it can uh, save your life. That's why they take it every day, let's say. <laughs> that's that's definitely the philosophy here is that it's, um, it's you know, especially we're, we're headquartered in Utah and there's just a lot of people that are focused on just being prepared, um, prepared for emergencies, prepared. And so they all have food storage. They, you know, really spend a lot of time thinking about that. And yeah, I think that's the best justification is that, um, you know, it's, if you never use it, great. If you need it, you'll be really happy, you know, that you had it. So, but yeah, I just, enjoy, I just enjoy them in general. I think that's the other part is that people here just like them. We enjoy playing with them and shooting them. And yeah, so they're also fun. That being said, I would understand too, they are dangerous. So I, I get the other side too. And the less familiar you are with them, the more they seem that way. And um, so, yeah, we're just in a unique position here, but it's fun. It's definitely part of my fun everyday carry and thinking of holsters and, you know, which ones to use. And um, yeah, but it's it's been been fun thinking about this too. I, I, I actually, I have a long list, but those are the ones on me today. So they must be the most important. Well, um, I hope that uh, it will be unnecessary uh, to carry. Uh, I mean, it you will don't you will not have to use it. But anyway, it's. I'm glad that you have one, and you, I'm feel safe for you then. So uh, uh, <laughs> coming back to uh, nomadic and the future product lines uh, that may be possible, uh, there was a question from one of our subscribers that you've got lines for travelers and photographers now. Uh, is there a sports line in the works? Uh, and what new exciting things can we expect from Nomadic in the near future? Uh, you have uh, slightly mentioned about a luggage series, but are there any other secret projects you can give us a hit about? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's... Um... Our company is really for creators, innovators, and lifelong learners. And I think the best way to sum that up, it's literally written on our walls here, is that um, what that means and what a nomadic customer is, like who we're trying to appeal to, and really who our founders are, is that they are people who are just constantly trying to progress uh, and in all aspects of their life. So mentally, spiritually, physically, you know, socially. And I think you see a lot of that, a lot of YouTubers are that way, right? Kind of pushing that message and sharing learnings and trying to just, trying to optimize all areas of their life they can. And I'm, I'm one of those. I'm, and I look for people who uh, are inspirations to me to do that. Point being, you mentioned the sports line. That is a feedback we get, right? Is that a lot of our customers are focused on trying to be healthy and, and stay fit. And so uh, anyway, it's a long time coming, but I, I, I'm positive that is being discussed and potentially worked on. And what I mean by that is something like a really good gym bag. Um, and then, yeah, our apparel... It, that would be a natural, you know, as we move forward with more confidence in our apparel line because of the feedback we've received. So many of our customers will also be, I'm sure, wanting something that they can take to the to the gym with them. So that one's coming. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it will, it will be a good fit uh, to the apparel. Yes, as you have said. Um, so you say that you you receive some customer feedback regarding this possible sports line, but um, what is the most memorable feedback uh, you have received from a customer? Do you remember something special and how did it uh, impact your work? Yeah, I think, um, and we, we hear a lot from our, our customers for sure. And um, we're actually in progress of conducting more phone surveys where a lot of us at the company will actually speak with them. But I love um, 
the thing I heard most recently, I was on a business trip and as we were waiting to go in those offices, someone else walked in wearing our bag and I could tell that he was a nomadic person. And what I mean by that is right. Like we're all on different levels of the journey, but something we see in our customers a lot is that they are, they do research. Like if they bought a mattress, they're the friend you would go ask which mattress, because you know that they, they did the research. And so this interaction with him was exactly that. I said, Oh, you have a nomadic bag. And he's like, man, he's like, I went on to YouTube. I watched every review. I spoke with my friends about their bags and I, you know, I knew that I was making a uh, educated decision and getting this bag and he was, he was just doing great. I mean, he's who is the aspirational, like he was kind of, I could tell he was just really had a good process, um, for all aspects of his life. And so it was cool to see. And, um, the feedback is important because that is our customer. It's, it's someone that pays attention to detail, does their homework, does the research and, um, Anyway, so it, it's a good reminder when we run into those people that that's who we need to service, you know, moving forward. When we design products, uh, nothing's going to get by our customers. So, and it's, it's great. It fosters that same atmosphere here. A lot of us here are very similar or aspiring to be similar to our customers. All right. So, well, uh, now we we know um, uh, more about your like customers' portrait. Let's say who who is your typical or ideal nomadic uh, customer. Um, I think that it fits to our audience as well. Uh, that's why we uh, have a lot of nomadic customers and fans. Um, so I would like to speak about business uh, part of of the brand of the company as well. Um, and now you have, uh, you deal with many other brands, uh, who also sell and offer great backpacks and bags. Uh, it's not easy to compete. Uh, so, um, and I'm sure you, you do some research and you look what other companies do and have you noticed uh, new trends that you see in the industry? And what's the nomadic plan to stay at the front at the forefront of innovation? Yeah. Well, one thing we've noticed is there's a lot of competition. And I can't go onto a social media site and I'm just always surprised at how many more new companies there are. And um, you know, bags, apparel, like we're in categories that are inherently crowded spaces. So, um, as far as the trends, I think, I think what's most important is one of our core kind of, um, mission statements is just innovation. Like, right. The quality has to be there, the thoughtfulness of design. Um, but for us, it's just focusing on where can we contribute something that's valuable in this category that will be appreciated. Um, and so that that's kind of our, our niche is that. And then the other thing is, I think we're in a good place where there's more premium kind of brands where the label kind of, you know, it's going to be uh, more expensive. And then there's a lot, backpacks traditionally were always in that lower end. So I guess the biggest trend has been that um, people are realizing an everyday item that they're using all the time. They want something nicer. Um, that's what's been going on. I think the premium bag category and premium normally meaning 150 and up has been growing, um, you know, by I think 200% last year. I mean, it, it's, I think that's, what's changed. Um, and there's a lot of cool new brands of backpacks that are in that. And I think we're in a good spot where we're, I think you'd almost say uh, an approachable premium, like the affordability 
it still is an expensive bag, but it's not, you're not just paying for the label. You're not doing a markup. Um, you're just, you're, you're paying for really good quality materials, really good design innovation. And I think the lifetime warranty is there for that reason as well, to give confidence. Um, one of the customers I was interviewing was kept saying the whole, uh, buy it nice or buy it twice. And I think that resonates with our customers too. They look at it as a, an investment in them. And that's, you know, ultimately our goal is that we have these, you know, movers and makers, we have these, you know, creators and innovators as customers. And, you know, we're just there to hopefully help. Hopefully it's helping them uh, feel more confident in what they're doing and the, you know, their life on the move. So that's it. I, I don't, yeah, I don't actually spend a lot of time thinking about our competition because there's a lot of it. I think we're really focused on, on making sure we're making the best products we possibly can and then hearing customer feedback and and we're getting better. It's, it's easier as you get a little bigger, it becomes easier to excel um, at those things like listening to customer feedback, reacting to customer feedback and yeah, that's been the journey of Nomadic is I think we're getting better at those things and hopefully we'll be getting better faster. Yeah, I can actually agree totally 100% because um, I have a, a sample from you, uh, which I have recently get uh, exclusively uh, and I can have a small, small small <laughs> side part of it and uh, i can say that um the product that is coming and the price the retail price it um is uh, going to be is is uh, the best uh, um a proportion between uh, the quality uh, and the money you have to pay for this quality and for the, all the function and so on. This is this is a very exciting product, uh, especially for the price that uh, the customers will have to pay. Um, so you are doing a great job, and um, I hope uh, that yours and our customers will will love it. They will love the new the new series that is coming, and. Um, uh, also, I know that you are very good at uh, marketing materials and some promo on social networks or in, on internet, uh, basically. And um, one of our subscribers was always asking uh, you about marketing of premium everyday carry products. Uh, can you share some um, some ideas, some information about how do you effectively market? such uh, high quality products with a premium price and how do you convince customers that your bag is worth this investment um can you share like a marketing success story yeah i will one i'm i'm not in charge of our marketing they they do a good job of this um but that being said I'm just going to start with a very basic one that has very little to do with what we're doing. And that is, but it's really important is word of mouth. Like we get passionate customers and, you know, frankly, I'm one of them too, right? Like I, when I started here shortly after the travel pack came out, I, um, you know, I just thought kind of a bag is a bag. You know, I had taste in bags, but um, I never experienced one that it was when I went to pack it for my first trip that I was like, holy crap, this is actually like yeah, they did. It was a thoughtful design. It was a surprise to me that it made a, a difference. Um, and so that, you know, just personally, I was won over. Um, and that is a huge part of it is that we get a lot of word of mouth and a lot of connections through people that become fans of our bag. Um, we've been lucky in that we do have a lot of creators and YouTubers that just organically were using our product and loved it and wanted to stay connected. That helps from a marketing perspective. So I guess 
you know, never lose sight of that. You have to make something cool (laughs) that people like. Um, and so we're, you know, staying mission focused on that. Um, but yeah, the, the trick is that you have made something that you're communicating that is premium materials, you know, our bags, a differentiator is that too, they are structured bags a lot. You know, they're not just falling in on themselves. That's a differentiator right away. You don't always see that, get that over the video, but if it's just hung on a wall next to other bags, you can feel the difference. Hopefully people can see the difference, but we are, we're using very good materials. A lot of thought is put into that. We're using a lot of surveys. What are you carrying? Where are you putting it? So we, we put a lot of thought into the design as well. And then, um, yeah, stand by it with a lifetime warranty. And yeah, I think it helps that we are selling most often to people, um, just like, like us, they care about the same things we care about. They're on the same journey in life, you know, um, and a lot of the same interests and yeah, that's, that's how we do it. And, um, I think that's the key is you just have to make sure you're kind of checking off that it's innovative, it's thoughtful, it's really good materials, um, and that you back it up with a life. Yeah. Uh, well, actually the perfect example, how you convince, um, a customer to buy your product is, uh, plus a good marketing success story probably is a story you have recently, uh, shared with me that, uh, you've got uh, a review. Uh, which is non-commercial from a very popular UK uh, YouTuber who is um, uh, who is making videos basically about uh, gadgets, electronics, and so on. Uh, we can probably um, give the link in the description. And uh, so he was uh, mentioning the Nomadic uh, travel pack as the the best uh, backpack for any like traveling or everyday um, a mission, let's say. So, uh, so if uh, if such a famous, uh, popular person uh, buys this product, uses this, and uh, is ready to tell about it to the audience for for no uh, for no money, this is a perfect example um, that. Uh, how how you uh, are getting uh, successful, well known, and this word of mouth uh, is probably working really well now in the UK, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was a surprise to me, but that's exactly what happens. I mean, we've made some incredible connections, and and yeah, I don't. It wouldn't happen if they um, didn't love the the product. Like they they love it and it turns into a relationship of like, how can I work more, you know, with you? Um, and yeah, it's just an incredible time too, that fits well with our, our kind of beginnings and our brand story, um, which is that kind of self-improvement, you know, lifelong learners, um, looking for efficiency in every aspect of their life. And, yeah, there's a ton of podcasts now where people that's their right is how can I maximize parts of my life? How can I improve? Um, and so, yeah, we're right along there, you know, on that journey with everyone else. And yeah, it's, it's kind of just good timing. I feel like, I mean, most of our customers are, you know, 30 and 40 year old males, you know, and, um, it's a cool community and, um, but you know, in theory we could, we will cast a wider net eventually, I'm sure, because it's not just, you know, dudes in their thirties that are interested at improving and, you know, um, you know, living this life on the move as we describe it, it's kind of everyone should be so plenty of opportunity to branch out right now. We're, we're pretty focused and it's a, it's a natural focus too. I mean, John and Jacob are, you know, guys in their thirties. So, um, but it's, it's exciting and our team is becoming broader and different and 
So lots of room to grow for sure. Yeah. So, um, you have recently had a local success in the UK with this video. Uh, the, there was a cool boost of sales. And speaking of the global success, um, of course, your main market is uh, like a no North America, let's say, USA plus Canada. Uh, but which, which region or country yeah. does Nomatic see particularly strong sales in if we are not uh, speaking of? Uh, North America. Well, I'll tell you, we're making some changes here so that international business will be like our one of our main focuses as far as um, growth. It's helpful having been a Kickstarter brand. Kickstarter is pretty global, um, you know, and I should just say crowdfunding like Indiegogo and things, but it's a huge advantage in that way that there's a global audience already. Um, and then, of course, some of the influencers and things that have gravitated to our bags, they also have global audiences. But um, yeah, I think we're, we have a lot of room to grow and where it's surprising places where um, I'm like thrilled that we are doing well and that you wouldn't maybe expect is um, Thailand. We have like a great partner there and I love going over there. And I think Peter even recently in a video was talking about maybe the same thing, like he was in Thailand and saw his bag there and how surprised he was. And, um, but it's, that's really cool. That's a cool just market to be in. Um, and it was a little unexpected. And, and I, I think, again, we have a lot of room to grow there too. Um, but yeah, traditionally, uh, it's been kind of Korea. And then of course we have our European brand, um, for EU, UK, um, and that's been growing this year. And yeah, we're gonna invest a lot in growing. One of it is just an easy kind of supply chain issue. Like let's stock up, get a new warehouse and then turn up the volume. So that's actually beginning this month. So I think you'll see more of us. It's, it's really cool that our, there's nothing about our product that's uh, not appealing, I think globally. Like, Right, right, like there's guys like us everywhere, you know, and so we want to be able to service them better. Um, we just we're, we just recently kind of launched Australia in a bigger way. I mean, those Australians like to travel, so I hope they love our products. And it's been off to a great yeah, start. We have to have uh, have to have a, a good backpack and luggage in general because yes, um, they must travel if they um, yeah. like a lot get out yeah yeah and yeah so that's it's exciting and uh, you know travel is still our number one category i can't imagine that we're not always going to lean into travel um granted people use our travel pack as an everyday bag because you know they some people have more gear than others and then um but yeah i will i will say we have some new stuff in the travel coming out and I think it's really cool and kind of like the sample of that product you held up a moment ago. Um, sometimes when it's our next shot or we learn things along the way, um, you can see some pretty clear advantages. So um, I don't want to spoil too much, but we, we have some really cool stuff coming up soon. One of those will be, uh, luggage so it's exciting yeah we actually uh, expect um it's uh, in our store as well soon um hope to see it in available in september yeah well since so, so i kind of spoiled i spoiled it a little bit luggage but one of the cool things i will say is me personally for luggage i care about durability right it has to be unbreakable preferably as light as possible, but then space, like these are the practical considerations. And so those first two, I think, you know, that you just have to have, you have to have a durable one. I think we found ways to make it lighter, but I think what people are going to be really amazed by is how do you make more space in the same size, you know, carry on luggage, standard carry on luggage. How do you make more space? even that your external dimensions are going to be the same. And I think 
we've got something exciting coming for yeah, that. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I know some, some info that you are going to have like really bigger space inside this the same size, which is which is uh, really curious and unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, let's 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 wait a little bit and uh, um, see uh, see it in, re in in real life. Plus, with your um, with your more info and materials coming. Um, actually, uh, you have previously mentioned uh, Peter McKinnon, as far as I understand, uh, which you have partnered with. And it's a fantastic collaboration. And um, so I would like to ask, like, is there a potential for a collaboration with a popular Russian photographer or traveler, for example? Yeah. Yeah, you find me one. You find me the right one, Kiana. And... Uh... <laughs> And we're we're interested. I don't I don't know how to say his name, but I would prefer if it was uh, Fedor Fedor. Right, Melianenko. Okay. He's a <laughs> photographer or traveler. Yes, that would. Be... All right. <laughs> no, no, we mentioned maybe a gym bag, right? Well, I think that uh, anything. Um... In his in his hands, any any line uh, traveling or even photographer <laughs> line uh, can be um, can be successfully uh, like promoted, let's say. Or if it's a, it's a totally new line, it, it's really interesting <laughs> to see how it how it can be. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. I, I just named my favorite person. So there you go. That's that's who uh, that will be top of mind. But I'm sure, yeah, we're always looking. It's it's an interesting idea. It, obviously, like I think if you look at the McKinnon bags, it's um, you have to have someone that uses these things every day and get their input and insight. Um, getting Peter's name on there, I think, is just validating like he's a thoughtful person right it, it was a good that was a really good collaboration because if there's a super strength of our founders it's that they're analytical they're they're you know deep thinkers and um pragmatic and i think that was necessary because they neither of them were you know they're hobbyist photographers but getting some insights from Peter was like a massive help and getting our foot in the door in that industry. So that's all, it's a great, that's one of my favorite channels is the photography channel that we sell into. Um, they love their gear, right? I mean, they're perfect for that and you get instant feedback and you also get content because they're out there taking pictures, making videos. So that it's, it's, that's really cool. We, we have some cool things coming, um, some this year. We have a lot coming between now and the end of the year. This oftentimes happens where we have a goal to launch something, but we we tweak things and get in debates and arguments here. But there will be quite a few new products coming before the end of this year, and then um, some that will be pushed to early next, but some of those are photography items. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to give away too much about um, – some of the other things, but we, we have some really cool stuff coming with uh, photography as well. Well, uh, yeah, uh, we are also really excited about uh, the things that are coming. Some of them we already uh, we have already seen. Um, some are um, unknown for us as well. So it's cool that you are uh, you're on the move uh constantly so you're creating new and great products and uh, you are opening like new fields let's say um so we are also excited that you have said that you have in mind a new like sports line or something else uh it's great to have um nomadic uh in our store and people uh, and our customers just love love the brand and love the products uh so I'm thankful for your time and uh, for many interesting stories and info uh, that you have shared with us. Uh, so let's uh, finish this, this podcast.
Yeah, well, right. yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's placebo. Uh, this has been good. Thanks for tolerating my uh, my Russian introduction as well. So uh, some quick Googling this morning. That was cool. Got yeah. me there. Spasibo. Spasibo za eto. <laughs> so thanks. thanks again. And uh, спасибо слушателям за то, что смотрели нас. Uh, подписывайтесь, ставьте лайки. И uh, в скором времени у нас будут новые подкасты с новыми гостями. Um, so, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. Uh, thank you for your time again. Um, thank you. Thank you. До свидания. До свидания.